Hey guys, Days Inch 1611. Um, I'm just going to show you how to make a tin can cook set like the one I had in my uh, cook set video um, where I made the uh, biscuits and gravy and the egg. Um, it's a pretty simple process. I like to keep it simple, not do anything too complicated. So it just consists of three cans. I got a, uh, a coffee can here, a 10 ounce coffee can. It's got to be metal, of course. And uh, obviously the coffee's all gone and it's got a lid which works out nice for later. Um, I have a, a bigger can. Um, it was crushed pineapple and uh, one thing I make sure about the fruit cans is that uh, they're not plastic lined. It's a lot harder to get those uh, fired and, and, um, and seasoned to, uh, to make it work. So I got, I got that and I also have another small can that uh, pears came in and actually, they actually all nest together. So that's what we want. We want where they all can nest together. together. We we'll actually have a rim in here that, that this will come out after we're done. But they'll all be able to nest right together and we'll have to close it all up inside. Um, typically you want a can for like cooking, boiling water. You want a can for um, something else. You can cook something else and then maybe a can for, uh, for like a cup. So three cans, that's what I use in my, in my set and it works out nice. So um, we'll show you what, what you got to do first is fire them so they can get seasoned and you burn off any of the, uh, the old glue and plastics. So we're going to take off the paper and then we're just going to toss them right into our fire here. So let me get the paper off and then we'll show you throwing them into the fire. All right, we're going to toss our cans into the fire. Um, the fire probably should be burning pretty clean. Um, not a lot of uh, uh, like a, a smoky fire because it's putting a lot of, a lot of uh, creosote on your can. But um, we're just going to fire the cans and burn off any impurities on the cans. So we'll just get those in there. Now, if you don't want to leave them in there too long because if you get a hot enough fire, the fire could actually uh, over fire them and could actually melt the can and, and well I should say melt it but it should it would actually uh, degrade it so we're the, we would actually lose its integrity so we just want to burn all of the junk off the cans the glue and the uh, any um, manufacturing oils whatever else that's on there and get them fired up pretty hot and once they're fired up uh, then we're going to actually uh, uh, season them with some with some oil so we'll get into that in a second. Almost done. All right, I'm going to show you how to f uh, finish seasoning the rest of these cans. Um, we're running out of daylight outside. You can, as you can see inside the can here, I don't know if you can get a good look at that. There's a lot of ash from whatever burned off inside. So get some light. Here, take it from the, where the light is. Can you see that? All right, so that's, that's, that's the stuff we've got to get out of there, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll, we'll season it up. So I'm just going to clean it up. i got a lip on this can, too, that needs to come off. I can feel it. It's got a sharp edge on there, so I'll take that one. And the other can, same thing. We're going to wipe all the residue off of the inside and off the outside. All right, to season the cans, what I want to do is I want to put a light coat of oil on them. The oil keeps moisture from causing any rusting on the uh, cans. And as you, be, as you use the can for cooking and over the fire and stuff, you'll build up a light layer of creosote, which will actually help to guard the can against uh, corrosion, too. Um, I'm using coconut oil. I love this stuff. I use this for everything. But the reason I'm using coconut oil is because a lot of the other vegetable oils or, and animal fats would um, actually get rancid really quickly. Um, if anybody knows of a better oil that doesn't get rancid as fast, let me know. But I think coconut, is, as far as I know, is the, one of the best oils to use for um, uh, that it won't go bad quickly. So we're just going to use a little bit of this coconut oil and uh, coat up our cans. Okay, we've already I've already coated up this can with a light coat of oil. We're going to do the other can now. So I'm just going to put some on the inside and rub it around the inside. And I don't know if you can see that, but we'll just coat, it, coat the entire inside with, uh, with the oil. I'm just going to make sure that's all evenly coated. Not real heavy. You just want it to, to
to cover the, uh, the surface so that it, it protects it against rust. I should say moisture. So just give it a good coating and then we'll do the same thing to the other can. And then once we've done that, we can actually construct our, our bale for our handle and a few other things that I, I like to use in my cook set that helps me out with cooking. So um, stay tuned for that. Okay, so there's uh, our three cans. One, two, three. They all nest inside. And uh, we can get ready to put the bale on for the handle. All right, so we've, uh, we've actually fired our cans and we boiled them up to pr preserve them from uh, corrosion. So the next thing to do is to add the, uh, the handle, the bale for the, uh, for the pot, and some other things. So we're going to use a regular co wire coat hanger. This one happens to be coated with like a rubber. You can get the ones that are lacquered. But in either case, you're going to want to strip that um, coating off of there, either sand off the lacquer. In this case, I think the rubber just peels right off pretty easily. So we're going to cut this and use the wire from this. And the reason I use this is because it's easy to find. You, most people have these around their house. So you're just going to cut the hanger off. What we'll do is we'll, we'll bend it up straight, and then we'll cut the, the size piece that we need for our bale. We'll measure that up, and then we'll, uh, after we strip off the, uh, the rubber coating. That should be long enough for our for our bale. Okay, so for our bale, we basically want something big enough to kind of go like that. So that's probably long enough right there. So I'll chop that there, and this piece will be our bale. I'll just bend it so that I get a. fairly even and we'll, we'll deal with all the little things later. So that should be kind of like that. Okay, one thing with the bale is that I want to, I want to be able to fit it into the, the largest can. And right now, it kind of sticks out the top a little bit. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the bottom so that when we put the can together, it'll stay inside the can. So it's about, I'll take it probably about an inch off the bottom. Not quite. Alright, so in order to actually hang the handle on here, we're going to need two holes in the sides of the can. So the way I put those holes inside the can, I'll get a nail that's about the same gauge as the wire, a little bigger. And I'm just going to pop a hole. I mean, you can do this with a drill, I guess, too. I just want to make sure I want to stay away from the seam because it'll be hard to pop a hole through there. So I'll go on the 90 degrees away from the seam. I'm just going to put the nail there. Take a hammer. Bang it. I get a nice little hole like that. We'll put one exactly on the other side. So now I have two holes for my bale and we'll uh, bend up the bale. So the end, all right, so the ends of the bale will have to be bent up or the handle will have to be bent up so that um, when we put it in, it'll uh, actually hold the, hold the can. So I'm just gonna take the end and just bend it up just a little more than a 90 degree bend like that. And then the other side, same thing. So that it bends down. And then I have two slightly upward pointing tabs. And then I want to put my handle in. Voila! I now have a swinging handle that I can hang this off of a stick or a, a post to be able to uh, cook my food. <clears throat> Alright, so the other thing that... Um, that I use in my, my cook set is every once in a while when you want to pull this off the fire this whole thing is hot and so what I use, I might make myself is a little hook to be able to pull it off the fire so I'm just going to cut another piece of metal um, not too long and I'll just make a little hook so I can actually hook this off the fire when I want to remove it alright and all I did was for that was I just cut a short piece of wire and I'm going to cut maybe a three quarters to an inch piece and there's my little my hook part and then uh, on the end here, I just made a little a little loop so I can grab it with my finger. It's not a big deal. You can uh, do this however you want. 
so I have a little grab there. So when this is hot on the fire, I can grab that off and I don't have to touch it. Okay, the other thing we're going to need a piece of wire for is to be able to make a handle for our cup. Obviously, if we have hot beverage in here, we don't want to hold the cup like this. We want to put a handle on it. So the simplest way to actually put a handle on it is to wrap a wire around it. So in order to fit the, uh, the wire around the, uh, the top of the can, I'm going to twist it around the can and get an idea of the exact circumference of the can. I have this little lip right here so that it will actually hold the wire from slipping up off the top if I twist it tight enough. So I'm just going to wrap the wire around the can real tight. I've already bent it a little bit to make it easier to hold it in place. And then I'm, when I hold the wire in place, I'm going to get my marker and just mark where the exact circumference is. So now I have a mark on both sides of the wire and I can know where to start twisting. Okay, so I made the initial bend where I had the, uh, the two marks and now I've got it back around the, the tin. I'm just going to take this, put them together, and give it a good tight twist with my lineman's pliers. And that should give me a tight enough hold to hold, so now it holds the cup up. And now, all I'm going to do now is just twist it all the way back and uh, get, get myself a little wire handle going on here. All right, that should be probably long enough for me to make a handle. So I'm going to actually bend it so that it'll be uh, short, uh, narrow enough to fit in the in the uh, cups. What's going to happen is it's going to fit in this one, and this one's got to fit inside of my cook set. So if, as you can see, I'm going to need to make the bend happen right about there. So I'm going to grab it right there, just make my bend. And then obviously this is too long, so I'm just going to take that and I'll just lop that off. And now I have a handle for my cup, so I can actually grab it without having to grab the beverage, the, the side of the cup when the beverage is hot. Mm, that's good coffee. Alright. Okay, so that's pretty much our kit. We have our, our pot. We have our other cooking container for whatever we want, and we have our cup with the handle. I have my little grabber, and I have the bale for my for my pot, and uh, we can nest it all together. Bale in there. That this can go on the side, hang it off the back, and then I still have plenty of room in there for something like tin if you want to make add that and also I use Altoids contain I'm Altoids I use um airborne containers to, to hold uh, spices or or anything else I want to add flour or anything that I want I want to cook with and that'll fit in there and we can take a lid put it over the top and boom tin can cook set so Go out and try making one yourself. Hope you have a good time with it. And uh, if you haven't seen me cook with this, you can go over to see my video on how I uh, cooked a meal with a tin can cook set. I made some uh, some biscuits and gravy along with a poached egg, so it was kind of fun. It tasted good. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And there we have our sausage cooking. And over here we have our, our egg. It looks like it's poaching pretty well, actually. So. Uh, start the next step.